Hey guys, today we get to talk about the $499.99 Underground C from Revised. Now it should be noted this is the cheapest Underground C. So this is not the most expensive one, which would be the Alphas and the Betas, or even the Unlimited, which is far more expensive than this one. It is the cheapest Underground C on Star City Games. Now the average price for a moderately played underground seeds around 250 300 dollars and near mint one you can probably get for less than 400 why is this important right some people will say oh it's just star city games they do this stuff all the time they do it but they also raise their buy list i believe the buy list is at 300 dollars now and a buyout is evident and a lot of you ask, oh, those petty MTG financiers, no one can do a buyout like Star City Games has done in the past. And they've done it with the Fetchlands, and I think they're going to do it again with Underground Sea. Now, the normal buy list market price is $225. Star City is around $300. The listed median is around $350. You can get a moderately played with the shipping for 280 and the market price for a normal one is 308 so when we talk about uh, when you talk about potential to buy out something this is it right there's no other card on the reserve list that is mo more needed and to play legacy or the or older formats we're never going to see another one of these reprinted as long as wizard of the coast adheres to its reserve list policies and it would be very simple for them to pull the trigger and say yeah we're going to buy out every single one if star city games is selling it for 500 then they can buy for 300 and still make a hefty hefty 200 dollar profit they would do that all day long right all day long why not this has happened one time in the past. So these are the damage, the heavily played. You can get 200 or more for a, just a worse condition underground sea. And it's been some time since it really has gone up and up and up. It has never declined in price. One of the important things to know, one of the very important things to know about this particular card it's on a reserve list and it's being played as a four of in some of the top legacy decks. It's not going to get cheaper than it is today. Uh, it's one of those things that I can tell you a year from now, it'll be worth a lot. But there might be artificial inflation along the way and that's going to be Star City Games. So they're selling for 500, they're buying it for 300. It only makes sense for them to go out to the marketplace buy as many copies as they can get for $300 near mint of course uh, and we're going to show you the near mint slide the cheapest near mint one and then just accumulate them and charge 500 and impact the marketplace so the cheapest near mint is $325 you do have one at 369 so the buy list is not so much that you can do arbitrage and you might be like, oh, well, that sounds kind of silly. It's because they probably bought out everyone under 300 already. That's what happened, right? The prices have already started ticking up and up and up because anything under their buy list, it only made sense for them to go to the local stores and buy them out. Let's talk about the story of Misty Rainforest and the Scalding Tarn. That's exactly what happened. A lot of stores were like, wait, what's going on? This other, you know, Star City Games is buying our stock of these two fetch lands and they're buying every fetch land in sight. They bought all the fetch lands because they could and then they reset the price at, I think, 25 from 15. We're going to see graphs now. Then they set the price from 25 to 40. And then at Star City Games Richmond, <laughs> the fetch lines were over a hundred for whatever you can say about mtg finance no one does it better than a store a store has more capital a store has more ability i mean they have the ability to get rid of it which is very difficult in some cases 
and they can get rid of it at retail. They have a website, so it's not like they have to pay TCG Player uh, any fees or they are the website. So when you see movement on this, I'm always following Star City Games buy list because if they wanted to inflate the price of a card, they can do it overnight. And I think this is what happened. They purchased every single Underground C under $300 near Mint, and now they're artificially inflating the price. Um, again, it was $15. It's $15, right? And then uh, Modern happens. And but even before, even after Modern was announced, it still stayed at fifteen dollars. It wasn't like going up, and they were seeing some legacy play. So fifteen was wholly reasonable for the price of or sixteen for either of these uh, enemy fetch lands. But they were artificially spiked. Oh, Misty went over a hundred. I think Tarn reached very close, but not quite. And that's what happened. Uh, it is a very interesting example of what MTG Finance could be if you had enough bankroll. The problem is not many people have enough bankroll. Star City Games has probably a hundred. You probably throw a hundred thousand dollars at the uh, Zenikar Enemy Lands, and they probably can throw more on the more stable, the more certainty that the Underground sees because it's on the reserve list because it's a blue black land will not go down in price, they can probably throw a quarter million dollars at it and just buy out every near mint one they can find. And then overnight, it becomes $500. Because that's the only, you can only go to one place to get it. I'm intrigued that this is happening because I felt like the times, like when I first found out that Star City Games was doing that to the enemy fetch lines it made a lot of sense but i did not realize they could do it at that volume it was the first time i've seen a store buy out just the entire market pretty much overnight this is the second time i've seen something like this happen and it's not by so they planned it right it's not like oh on a whim we're going to set our price at 500 dollars and near mint or mint and then we're gonna buy list at 300, and oh, by the way, no one's selling it for less than 300 now, because anyone selling for less than 300, which is typically a big investment, not every Magic player has $300 to spend, it's all gone now, uh, it's all gone. And they are big market shifters. They can shift the market whenever they want, uh, because they are huge, huge uh, players in that. So when people say, oh, you bought out the Narwhals, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I bought out a few and then people caught on to it and they wanted to buy out more Narwhals and that's what happened. But I never, I, it would take a store. It would take a store with massive capital to buy something out like the Underground Seas or even the Zendikar Fetchlands. Because it's a heavy risk, and unless you have a way to move them, you're just going to sit on them. So when you have an individual, like the individuals in the past who were buying out Moat, and I think that's there will be price adjustment just because that person cannot sit on those Moats forever. But Star City Games can literally sit on these revised, or these revised underground seas until the cows come home. Right? They can say, all right, we believe it's $500. And what they believe comes a reality. So not, I mean, it's interesting. It's definitely something that I have uh, seen before. It's not something new from Star City Games, but it is interesting that it's this card they are targeting. It makes a lot of sense. It's on a reserve list. It's played as a four of in the strongest legacy decks. It's blue black. It's it's one of the best cards in Magic: The Gathering. Um, if you had to buy out a card, it could possibly be this card because if you make this card $500, then you're saying, hey, do you want to play Legacy? No? All right. Yes? Okay, buy a playset of this for 2000 It's crazy, right? It's crazy. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye, guys.